Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. All right, so Lee's been getting uh, the Suzuki four-stroke that Terry and Rick um, kindly gave us, and he's been playing with the last couple of days, and I haven't filmed. All right, quick update. We haven't done too much. Brian lent us his electric motor, and he come down. We had dinner with him last night, and I didn't really want to wait until next week when he wasn't here, so I sort of wanted to get his engine back to him. So I've just uh, come back from a little run in the boat, and I noticed I had like a little rainbow at the back of the boat, which is fuel, not oil. So I thought the carby must have been playing up but I've just pulled it off to have a quick look and here is one of the culprits. I don't know if this is gonna fix the whole problem. Um, we've had this motor gifted to us or sitting on a boat for many years, not in use, and that rubber's just broken. Don't know if I've got anything I can replace this with. It's quite a small hose, definitely a problem. When I accelerate, the boat really hasn't, it just wants to die. I'm gonna give this little squirt down and try and see if I've got any of this hose I can sort of. All right, I had a little bit of diesel hose left over for our diesel heater. I've put that in there and that was completely apart. Uh, I've freed up everything. Everything's uh, all moving like it should cleaned out all the area, pulled the bottom off, cleaned the jets out. We're gonna see if this thing works now. Bloody darn motor. It's running, but it's cutting out. It's not running quite right. It's a bit like me before I started drinking mud water. It wasn't running quite right, didn't have the energy and couldn't keep going. I'm gonna start my morning with a mud water before I order some more parts for the engine. Yeah, so I can't believe it. Kicked the habit of coffee now. It's been a few weeks and got more energy, able to get into the tasks on Catalpa and get ready for Mexico. So it's been busy, busy, busy. I found a pretty cool site, Brown's Marine, and they're a Suzuki agent. They give you the schematics, the breakdown. So I've ordered all new little bits and pieces for the carby. So once I've ordered all these new little parts, I think we should be on the way. Hopefully we should have an outboard. That's if I can get it running right. I think I should. Till then guys, I'm gonna fill myself up with a bit of goodness. If you're not sweet enough, you can add a bit of honey or you can add a bit of crema or you can add a bit of coconut milk or you can add whatever you like whatever tickles your fancy but i just run it straight straight out of the can yeah i'm feeling really good it's helping me get through these big long days to get catalpa 2 underway we're gonna fuel up to go to mexico and uh, go for a bit of a sail this afternoon so let's go we just pulled anchor and <laughs> now we have a problem what's the problem the problem is we have a boat <laughs> We're supposed to be leaving for Mexico in like three days. Now we have a big problem. Enough boat, enough problem. Bigger the boat, bigger the problem. <laughs> uh, the autopilot seems to be working. Oh, we got wind. This one thing's working. <laughs>
say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. So we're back. The kids are learning how to put the sails up and down this boat because it's all new to us still. And uh, they're just putting down the, the mizzen. The captain's going to sit there and oh, give captain, orders. Captain stay off. Uh, <laughs> we just hired a captain from uh, Ocean Quest. You want a nice day out in San Diego Bay? You got to talk to this guy. Thanks, Captain Max. That was a lovely little ride. <laughs> Captain Max hasn't actually sailed the boat, and he sailed jig and jigger today. We had the mizzen up, the stay sail, and the head sail, and uh, had a nice little cruise of San Diego. This is a nice boat. So it's probably appropriate time to say thank you, Max. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. But guess Thanks what? Thanks for finding this boat for us. <laughs> Thanks. This Max. thing sails a like a little boat. <laughs> like it sails like a little boat. But you go downstairs it's like a freaking house. Yeah. <laughs> I like this boat, man. This thing's sweet. Uh, we've only got one problem. The windlass is broken. Ah, we'll fix that. <laughs> Nothing's Pretty ever good. a problem. No stress, guys. You just got to go, you know what? Just fix it up and keep moving. But not everybody has the skill to do it. Well, you figure it out. You got Someone have the skill. around Dude, you does, you got though. The skill. You got if the you skill. You just go, look, there's a few other cruisers here. You knock on their boats and go, excuse me. Can you help me, please? <laughs> the cruising community is pretty good. It's true. It is. I don't think you've ever done that. And then... Have you ever gone and knocked on someone's boat and said, can It's because nobody else could do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's been nobody else around. <laughs> no, that's not true. We've had help. Thank no, you for we all have. those people who have helped us along the way. <laughs> and uh, we've had amazing help here in San Diego, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're going to miss our new home. You never know. We've said goodbye to this place once before. <laughs> Haven't we, Max? Yeah. <laughs> we came back. Yes. We're like a boomerang. <laughs> Lovely Thanks. afternoon sail. Thanks for sharing. Well, uh, we've had the captain of, uh, what's, what's your company called again? Ocean Quest Sailing Adventure. I've never heard of it. If you come to San Diego, hit me up. Subscribe. These guys are cool. Their boat is cool. And this guy knows how to fix boats. There you go. So he's been fixing. Trying to fix our windlass this morning and now he's having a haircut. This is how he gets a haircut on Catalpa. Having a bad hair day. Beautiful guys. hairdresser here. Can you do mine next? Yeah, but first me. Hey guys, so in front of me today I have our windlass motor apart. Uh, we took Max for a sail yesterday. We got the anchor 99% of the way up and then we hit the button and nothing. So there was no lead up to it. It wasn't like the windlass was slowing down. It just stopped. I was like, oh no, the motor's uh, blown up or there's a wiring issue or something. But long story short, guys, um, I've just pulled it apart. I didn't want to bore you with too much. It's realistically just two bolts and this thing comes apart. This here is all been cleaned up now. I've sort of tidied up the unit, but the problem is these. I'll show you when we get the new ones and we install them, and I'd say even this one was our problem child. It's really small. There's not much left of that. So it loses contact here, and then that's it. We have no windlass. But we've got to get out of San Diego. We've only got a couple of days left, so I've put a quick order in with Defender. Hopefully they get here soon enough and I can put this back together and uh, we'll be on our way. It's probably a good thing this happened now because we've got a bit of a trip ahead of us down the Mexico coastline and then up to Puerto Penasco where we're gonna pull out the boat. So we're definitely gonna have a handful of anchorages along the way there. So probably a good thing this happened, but hey, it's a pain in the bum at the same time. It's a bloody ripper, humdinger of a day here in San Diego. We've got to get in the water and just have a look at our cutlass bearings and have a little clean of our bum. We've got a bit of a dirty bottom at the moment. We've got something pretty cool that was sent out to us and we're going to give it a go and now is the perfect time. So we've been sent out these smackos. Not those sort of smackos. It's only a small cylinder, it's got its own little pouch, comes with a regulator, little gauge. Look, you're not going to go down 30 meters with it, but for something like what we're going to use today for an example we've got to check the cutlass bearing we're going to just run over the hull quickly who knows you might foul your anchor somewhere something like this is great like if you don't have a full scuba setup on the boat 
This would be an awesome little um, bit of kit to have on the boat. We're gonna go and put this little jacket on and um, get underneath and try this bit of gear out. We are certified divers. Today, we're using the Spacco. Many bugs on me right now. Apart from all these disgusting grubs. This little thing is so, so awesome. I just cleaned the whole bottom of our boat. Usually it takes me ages and I get cold because I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm free diving it, but this just made me go the whole entire bottom of the boat. And um, I've still got air. I think it was getting a bit low because it was getting a little bit harder to breathe, but this is awesome! What's I the goat say? Needed a weight belt. Oh yeah, I'm on empty. <laughs> Thought it was getting harder to breathe. But um, how long was I under for? A little while, like 15 minutes maybe? I don't think I've ever had this many bugs on me. This is disgusting. I think you come in the boat, darling. And I, I'm really, really hoping they're not all down my wetsuit. <laughs> Cutlass, moved it and it was wobbling. So that's what it is. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. So good news, we're ready to sail to Mexico. What's the problem now? We have a problem. We have a problem, again. We have a lot of problems at the moment. Just trying to find solutions. So, We just spent a hundred and twenty something dollars on these brushes because they were Maxwell ones, part numbers aligned, I actually had a model number on the windless motor, I cross checked it with the, well I checked it with the lady at Defender, I checked it actually at another marine store too and I checked it myself online and we all come up with this number for our windless brushes, this is our old ones very worn down and this is our new ones quite a lot narrower and this the wire that comes out the side actually fouls on this too whereas these wires come out the tail end of it so they're just these must be for a more modern motor assuming they've discontinued this motor but it's just time I'm sure I can find it it's very standard these are pretty much just starter motors our uh, windless motors I've got to fit, find some brushes for this somehow I don't know how yet but I'm a little bit nervous because we're out of time because we have a big anchor I really need this to work that's a little bit of a panic this morning I've just run an ohms test over this and this is actually no good it wasn't the brushes i did have a look again and they all had contact and i was gonna after i cleaned the armature up i was just gonna put it back together and and get moving and um order a new one at a later date but it's not allowing us to do that 
So there's a spot here which is shorting out or a broken wire or something's going on. It's just, it's not worth playing around with these for the cost of this, you're just buying your motor. We don't know what we're gonna do. It's a bit stressful at the moment. We are stuck with a motor that's not working and a motor that we can't find in San Diego and everywhere we call up from West Marine to Chandleries to Marine Exchange, all say they've gotta be ordered in and can take up to three weeks and who knows what. It's really hard at the moment since COVID. Nothing's really bounced back as far as delivery times. No one likes to sort of say a time anymore, but we're just going to have to keep hunting and see what we can find because um, we're out of time. On to the next problem, our outboard. All the parts we ordered have arrived, so Dad is about to replace a lot of the parts like hoses, seals, and anything that has perished over time. What's Dad doing this afternoon? Oil change and a little bit more. All right guys, I can't talk. We're losing sunlight, like everything. I just felt like we're just rush, rush, rush. Got to pull this carburetor off. Um, I'm going to give this a clean. There's a few bits. I'm putting a new float switch, clean the, everything up in there. I've cleaned it once. I just didn't do a good enough job and there was parts I needed to replace. I've done a fuel line that was all cracked and leaking fuel. Um, I'm going to drop the oil now, change the fuel pump, put an anode on it, change the oil filter, put a new fuel filter on. Just, yeah, change the gearbox out, new impeller, about 300 bucks worth of goodies, and hopefully this motor that was gifted to us will work. So thanks Terry and Rick, this motor sat on their boat that they've had for years, it's, they didn't even know anything about it. Um, they just offered it to us, and I was like, yeah, I'll have a go, see if we can get it to, see if we can get it to um, run. Got it running, it's just not running very smoothly. It's just running like absolute rubbish. The strange feeling that there's been fuel coming in maybe from the fuel pump. I'm not sure how these work. I'm a two-stroke guy. I love them, but we've got a four-stroke now. So I've got a feeling this may have been leaking fuel. When the diaphragm, I gather, fails, it could leak fuel into the oil. And I'm gathering that's why that's so thinned out. That looks like rubbish. That should be pretty straightforward. So I can see fuel getting pushed out here, which means that's going straight into the oil and thinning the oil. And that's no good. So I've half opened this up. I'm gonna see what the diaphragm looks like. I had a suspicion that this was sort of not working right. Which sort of means my fuel is going into the oil reserve. So that's the diaphragm and there's a hole in the pump. Dad was up pretty late, but got the outboard back together and well, she's running pretty damn nicely now. Good job, old man. Thanks for watching guys, see you next week, woo!